anyone who speaks here today is speaking from their own experience and their own individual thoughts and ideas. And then while we have a table of Latinas and many Latin people out here, that there are many countries that make up um, this Latina group. And that the cultures, the values, the beliefs, the experiences in each country may be a little bit different. So, Good afternoon to everybody. My name is Catherine Delgado. I come from Puerto Rico. I'm going to be talking a little about the challenges that we have as caretaker, family, single moms, um, as the household of parents, um, grandmother, and taking care of your own family. I don't want to offend anybody, so if I say something that you don't feel comfortable, I'm sorry with it. <laughs> um, I grew up older with my grandmother. I came from Puerto Rico when I was 15 years old. Um, I've been living with her since I was one year old. It's been challenges for me because I had to take care of my daughter, myself, my grandmother, and my two little cousins. I had to make sure that I have a time managing between school, work, and taking care of all of them. Um, sometimes I will be worrying more about them than being worried more about me, but that's part of the process. As Latina woman that I am, um, we think more about the family. We just more together, we make parties together, we cook as a family, and we always stay together. We never are apart from each other, it's just the way that we are. Um, we have um, very special moments, and we have different time that we don't always think the same way, but we always come around as a family. Um, I've been in school here since 2007, I'm very glad to be here. It's very, very supportive for me. Um, I want to thank um, Diane, Jackie, and Miss Denise for giving me the opportunity to be talking over here with you guys of the challenges that we become as Latina women that we have. I've been having, I've been through a lot of experiences between school, work, of being different. Um, being not from, oh, she's not from where I came from, or oh, she's totally different, or oh, no, I don't like her. It's just, it comes with a package. But as Latinas that we are, we can grow more older and more mature of things. And not always be um, negative about it. Taking things as more as a compliment. Being like, okay, they're saying bad things about me, I should be more, more expressive and let them know that even though you're thinking negative about me, I'm gonna show you I can do better. And I can be like you, I'm not gonna be different. I know we have difference between the looks, but everyone has different looks in here. We never come from the same place, like Portuguese, American, African American, Haitian, Dominican Republic, but we always are the same as we look at me inside of us. I think that, um, that my grandmother, she's a very influenced woman on myself. I've been, I've been seeing more about her in myself than myself as my mom. Every time I get older, I'm like, wow, I look myself most as my grandmother. I'm not really becoming as me anymore. And um, things that she used to influence me, it's like, wow, it's getting more helpful. And she's a very important woman to me as getting older and being in school. While me being here, she's at home helping me out with my daughter so I can come to school and be somebody. That tomorrow I can be and tell my daughter I went to school. It was challenges, but I became to be someone, very important. I could have a degree and education. I can give her something that I didn't have when I was little. Right now I share my room with my two little cousins. 
And even though I don't have my privacy, I feel confident that I can still come to school and one day I'm have my house and I will have my own stuff on my own and not sharing. But that, that's part of it. But I know that I will be thankful and they are thankful and grateful of what I'm doing today. No, what, what she says is, is pretty much what with everybody who came from around the country deal with in, this, in the United States. So maybe different, just like she says. In my case, I don't have any kids, so I don't went through what she, in that point, but pretty much what she says is what we went through. We just keep going. Do you find that um, your grandmother, your mother, your family has a great influence on you? My grandmother and my mother, they both have. Uh, yes, they uh, are. So yes, yeah, it is because um, actually, in my topic, is is the generation. So we can combine that in there. Like I came to the United States when I was 20. I was already older. I didn't went through like most of the people come here when they 15, 16, or maybe little than that. But I came here when I was 20. But I was already built. So that's probably why I didn't have so much trouble dealing with people and learning things because I already have my belt from my mom and my grandmother. But now people is dealing because they have the kids in here. It's not easy to raise a child in the United States. Because number one, we have support, yes, but you have to be very careful. Like we have to work with who your kids are gonna stay. They're not gonna be with you all day. You get home at five. You gotta watch, watch what they doing. It's like, it's a lot of work. In our country, it's like, okay, I had to work, but my grandmother takes care of my kid, or my mother takes care of my kid, or my aunt takes care of my kid, my cousin. We have that support, but here, we don't have that support. They have to go to a daycare, or they have to, pretty much just a daycare. And if you don't have the money, then you, <laughs> you have to work, do the extra work in order to get a, your daycare. I think she has a question. As Dominican, because I'm from Dominican, as you, um, I come to this country. I'm already old, like I was even uh, even older. Uh, what do you guys recommend to all Latinas coming here with kids and actually don't have any support? Like, like in my case, take a long time to uh, just decide to come to school because the kids, the husband, you had to work, all that. I mean, uh, what exactly you guys uh, recommend to all Latinas, specifically to have enough support to say, I have to go to school, I want to be this? Actually, I don't know if anyone can answer the question. I don't have a kid, so I haven't experienced that. Just keep moving forward because you're right now thinking, well, I'm an old person, I'm Latina, so I don't want to go to school. But you got to keep moving forward. You cannot stay the same way. You want to do it better for yourself, right? Yeah. And for your kids. So that means you got to keep fighting for it. You got to keep moving forward. At the end, you're going to see the results. Like when you're cooking, you start preparing everything and putting this and putting that. And at the end, you see the result. You see the food that you created. Right now, you're going to see it hard, but at the end of the road, you're going to see everything is going to be better. You're just going to be fighting for it, but you're going to see the results, though. Uh, I think the most important thing is that you try to be around people who can help you, too. So when you uh, establish like uh, links with another people, uh, you 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 are gonna be a strong. So you you are gonna have a support. In my case, I came here uh, alone with my ex husband and my children, and it's really tough. It's it's the same like everybody say over here. We have nobody over here in our country. We have aunts, uncles, cousins, everybody's around always. And everybody's closed. So my aunt lives in the, the two blocks, so next house on the second floor. So it's more easy to raise children in our culture. And we always live together. Even our cousins are, are 
our like our brothers or sister. Um, but when you came here, you had to stay in like in a cage for uh, walls all the time. And the season over here is different too. In our country, all time is sunny days and it's different. So the children can go play outside. We don't have any problem with that. The neighbors know neighbors. So we share food, we share everything. But over here, you don't know nobody. <laughs> so it's really tough. You don't know, um, you don't know your children. So you go outside, who's going to be around them. So that was the kind of scary thing that I experienced here with, with my children. It was the smallest. They were really small. So I think, like I said at the beginning, try to look for people. Like uh, they had the same background or people that you can count on. Maybe a church. If you are going to church, like I, I do, and Catholic. So I found people from my same background, some people from, from the same some people from the same country or they speak the same language that, that I speak. So I, they have almost the same problem. We have the same problem. So we can get, get it together. I don't know. That, I think this is the only way to try to look people. Um, I think uh, I agree with my friends, but one of the most uh, I'm, I think one of the biggest problems is that as Latin women, we usually try to resolve everything by ourselves. We want to care, take care of everything, we want to um, decide everything, and that's a cultural thing. And because of that, sometimes it's, 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 it doesn't help a lot. Sometimes we don't talk a lot, we don't look for help outside, and that's one thing that I think lack us to um, overcome the situation. Here in this country, have something that is amazing. If you have a problem, if you can, for example, like us, we want to learn, we're going to uh, go for, and we have kids. Every, every time you want to um, do something for you, if you look for the right place with the right people, you will find help. It's just that we need, like she say, we need to talk, we need to uh, look for help, and, and, and it's hard. It's, it doesn't mean that it's going to be easier, but it's going to be helpful, I think. hard because um, like she says I'm the only one who speaks English in my family so I gotta take care of them what I most of the time will do I will let them know what's the situation and even though when it's hard for them to understand our culture I'm like you know this is what it is that's this is my full package <laughs> <laughs> this is that full package that I come with when you come from another country and as other persons like I have a kid or oh, I gotta take care of them and like the situation that she brought out I really told her I really have to go like I know you you don't like it and I don't I can't this you know be I have to be in class but I will do anything to make up all the work that I did if I had to call you if I had to email you if I had to come back at seven o'clock and I, I will make sure I would get the, the work done but right now I really really have to go <laughs> that's what I told her <laughs> and she thought that was 
too. And I thought I was like, you know what? Do you know what I mean? And then she told me about the package. <laughs> Okay, well, <laughs> well, the announcement is that I'm running right now for um, BCC Student Senate. So, <laughs> thank you. Jeff. I decide to run for, well, it's not a political <laughs> campaign, but uh, I think it's the, the right way because I suffered many things before I was, well, I was ESL student. And right now I know how it's important of um, have someone in the Senate to help us. Because I passed through many situations like here, like many others because of the language, because of our culture, and I was afraid to speak of. Uh, right now I, I, I know any more of the people over here can identify with me. So if I get a little... I'm gonna be here for everybody. I just wanna help. I don't wanna the, the people get through the same situation that I have. I just wanna make easier the way to, the path through BCC is gonna be easier and for everybody. I wanna the, everybody enjoys being here. I, I like BCC and I found many, many good things over here. We have many tools and we had to know, know about it. Because we are ESL students, we always try to uh, stay on the B building all the time. We had to get out there. <laughs> BCC is more than B building. B building is an amazing place. We know a lot of people there, a, a lot of good people, but uh, BCC can offer too much for us. Well, now my, my point is about raising children in by cultural environment. And I didn't realize how hard is doing that over here. I always grew up with Colombian people, well, the same people around me all the time. When I came here to this country, my, my young children was just two years. And he passed through something very difficult. Only with two years, he started to bite in his in fingernails and after that with his toes, toes nails. We went to the doctor with him and nobody can notice anything until we went to the pediatrician and he said that he was under stress because of the change of culture with just, with just with two years. And he can speak, he, well, when we were into Colum when we was in Colombia, he speak Spanish, just a little, the first words. But over here in the United States, he can, he just point in everything. So I can imagine if a child just the two, of two years can suffer that kind of stress, what happened to another person in his older. So I think everybody here happened with the same thing, because the first thing is the language. We can communicate at the first time. Um, when, but at that time, I start to um, push them after my other, my other children to push them in too much pressure and to keep the Hispanic culture and the tradition on them. My older one, my oldest one, he always say, "Mommy, but why we had to speak in Spanish if?" All my friends, my teacher, in the supermarket and everywhere speak English. I don't need, I don't need Spanish. You are the only one to speak Spanish. So the first time that he said that to me, I, that, that was like kind of shocking. Say, wow, <laughs> why he told me that? But in, 
yes, I don't have like a real answer at the moment for him because that, that was true. I was the only one who speaks Spanish. And he said, you had to learn English better. And yeah, he told me that. He said, Yo, you had to speak English. You are here. And that was shocking. But in, at school, he started to learn, he, to know more people, more children, and someone speak a different language. He knows that someone speak uh, Portuguese, the other one speak uh, in, in Cambodian, another kind of language. So he starts to see the difference, how is the, the multicultural, multicultural environment over here. When he found uh, another classmate that speak Spanish too, the other person, the other child, is that to say words in Spanish to him. He can understand, but he can pronounce it. So he, start to, he goes to home and he starts to say to me this, the words in Spanish. So he starts to understand that learn another language is always important because you, always, you never know when you are going to find another person who, who I speak with. Right now he's 11. Uh, he is really concerned to learn more languages, not just Spanish. My mom is here, my mom came from Colombia, and my mom just speaks Spanish, so he is forced to speak with her in Spanish. He say a weird word. <laughs> he doesn't pronounce too good Spanish, but he is trying to do the effort to speak in Spanish because he wanted my, my mom to uh, talk to him. They tried to um, exchange words, so my mom is learning English right now, and he is learning Spanish. I think it's, it's a good, it's something good right now, but uh, that take a process. And I learned then I can force them to do something until they want to do it too. Uh, I just learned that after an article that Diana, Diane gave us to us. Uh, I don't know if somebody read that article already. My two lives. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing. That's an amazing article. Mm -hmm. Article. I'm sorry. And you can notice that it's the same thing. Well, I, when I came here, I don't have any problem with the what about myself and you know, what, what did I want to be? I'm already someone. But although for children it's more difficult because we always try, like a father, we always try to put the, everything on them. I want that they, I speak to them in Spanish, but they speak to me, say back to, in English. Um, I'm still, I'm right now in my home, we just cook Hispanic food, Colombian food. Sometimes uh, pizza or hot dogs, but uh, at my home we always cook Hispanic food. Um, the other thing is, uh, oh, in parties we sometimes go to to parties, friends' parties in house, and he say he likes the the rhythm, how we dance, how we move. He has started to learn, but it's because he's older now. When there are more the they have a kind of rejection, rejection for everything because of the environment that they have. I think it's because we, all, the majority of the friends are American, so they want to be like them. They, they take the same shows, the same, thi the same thing, they want to copy everything. But when they start to growing up, they see the, the richness of have two cultures instant the one. So I'm glad then I read the article and I don't have to push more pressures on them. And I think it's the only way. So you have to com you can combine perfectly two courses without put too much pressure on, on the children. And don't stress stress, me, stress them out too much. Um, yes, I just want to emphasize what she says. I have my little nephew, which is, um, my husband is, where well, my boyfriend is American. So when he goes home and he speaks to the little boy, he understands his way. 
But we also speak to him in, in Spanish. He eats Spanish food, but he also eats different stuff. Even though he isn't years old, he has started combining those two things together, which is just like he says, is a benefit for them. Speaking two languages is a, is a big, big benefit for us now in, in, in this country. But like I say, it just remind me when she was talking, just like the way he's learning, the process he's taking and now, when he goes to my house, he knows that he don't speak Spanish. So he knows when he speaks to him in English. And now he's started daycare today, and hopefully he does well. <laughs> so far we don't have any calls yet, so hopefully <laughs> Javier is doing all right. Or is it easy to just let it go and let them adapt to American culture? I think and this could be for you too in the audience if you want to share your thoughts, you know. In your case, your child motivated you to start to learn English or to take this to no, I did it because I want to better myself and I know that the first thing that I had to do was learn the language because I'm I'm in another country and the language of this country is, is English. So that's something that I I did by myself. And now that you say that I was I have a friend and she doesn't speak English at all. When she had problems at school with his child, he always has to talk with, call somebody to speak with her, for her. Even when she had to go to the doctor or something like that, I think that's, I have the, I, I get that too, and that's not good. You, you feel, you feel very bad, you can't spread your, by your, for yourself, it's uncountable, I don't know. I don't, I think it's better start to learn the language. Does anybody else have any comments or experiences you wanted to share? How I think we've come in talking about your son, uh, saying to you, uh, you are the only one who speaks Spanish. I think uh, my daughter, my youngest daughter, one time I say, can I help you with homework? And she say, what about if you don't know how to do, <laughs> you know? And, and that is, uh, the fact is, like, uh, encourage you to go to school. This is uh, one of those uh, important things to come to BCC. That's good motivation. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, everybody. Um, my name is Lizzie. I'm from Dominican Republic, and uh, <laughs> uh, I have um, a couple of years at BCC already. I remember when I started in the ESL program. I couldn't say a word in English. It was pretty much hard. But today I'm going to talk about the education, Latinas education. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but the Latin population is the largest minority in the United States, and we are growing twice faster than every other population. So pretty much in a couple of years more, um, we're going to be, I think, <laughs> no, I mean, my minority, we're going to be like a big, big group. and. Um, well, uh, as a Latina, we have to face a lot of challenges, um, a lot of circumstances that 
sometimes don't let us um, go for and 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 have a better education. Uh, this is an amazing country. We can have here more, more, more opportunities that we have in our countries. But sometimes Latina cannot like take advantage of those opportunities because many circumstances. Sometimes, um, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna explain you each one of the of the points that I think they affect us. Uh, the first one I think is the cultural compromise that we have with uh, our families. Um, sometimes we put um, all the responsibilities that we have first. We want to take care of the child, we want to take care of the house, we want to take care of husband, we want to take care of all the family that we live back in our countries and we want to resolve sometimes they problems, and we don't think about us. And um, for those type of uh, Latinas that come to the country in uh, younger age, they don't have kids, sometimes they feel afraid because of the language. They say, oh no, I'm just gonna work and when I have a better position, I'm just gonna go back. As a Latina, sometimes many people think like that. And uh, another point is the economic situation that is um, pretty much connect to the first one. Um, we want to help, we want to uh, provide a better, a better status in, in, their, con in their, 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 their family countries. And because of that, we focus on work. We want to work, sometimes we work two jobs, we want to have a better house, but we don't think that through education we can have more than that. We can grow up as a person. We can give the example for our kids. Um, the other thing is the uh, the legal situation. Many, many, many people that I know, they want, they really want, they really, they really wish to have a better education. But what happens? We all know that people who doesn't have. Um, a legal status, they can go to high school, but some of them say, well, what I'm going to do at high school, if when I finish high school, I cannot go to the college, I cannot go to any university, so I just got to do it, I don't going to do anything. They just go for work, because they think sometimes it's the um, easiest way. And um, the other thing is uh, the, the language. And this this part affect me directly because um, when I came to this country, I was already 21 years old, and I wasn't the school, I wasn't the university in my country. And when I came here, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try to finish my career and I see what's up, what happens. But when I went, when I get here. Surprise, you don't speak English, so you cannot go to the school, so you have to learn English first. And um, my first thought was, okay, I'm going back, I don't gonna learn anything because that's gonna take too long. <laughs> and and uh, I don't know, months later, I started work, full time job, and working and thinking by myself, I was like, this is not what I want. I want something better. And I realized myself that learning the language, it was the first door that I have to open to have a better education, to continue with my education. Sometimes that doesn't happen all the time. Many Latinas don't realize the school sometimes it's the it's not the faster way, but it's the better way to have a better lifestyle. And um, hopefully, not hopefully, I'm pretty sure that the next generations that are coming uh, don't gonna think in the same way because I can see it right now. I'm every 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 semester I'm I'm seeing more Latinas coming to the school and, and I'm glad of that. I'm glad because not only uh, the Latinas 
but also the child is going to have a very sensitive of the importance of education and um, I, I'm pretty sure that the, those numbers that say that Latina are the Latinos are the uh, biggest group on drop off the school. It's going to change pretty much faster than many people think. No, just like um, she says, I, I did the same thing. I went to my, co I was in my country. I was doing two years of college. When I came here, I was like, my mom was like, yes, Heidi, you can go to college. You can do this, you can do that and there. You can finish your career. But I had to hold that because I came with a compromise. I, say, I need to do this for my mom. I have to do this for my mom and this is what I came from and that's what I have to do. So I hold myself in order to get that. I get the result. But now I see myself in the middle, came to BCC, do what I have to do. And even my boyfriend told me, wow, you speak English better. You speak English well. You sound different. And then that's the satisfaction you have at the end. It's a long, long way, but it's good. The results feel good. And we have to keep, keep going. Keep trying, keep going, and, and you see the results is, is good. Just like she says, and we're glad that we see more people, not only Latinas, people from another culture too. It's, it's, it's amazing. You go to that process and you see the same people going to the process, it's, it's a good feeling. I also agree with them. It's true, we're having more people coming in and you're like, oh, I'm not the only one doing this. Everybody's doing it too, so you feel more comfortable. You get to see more people and you're getting more friends and you're, oh, let's study together, let's do together. Oh, I don't know what this means. And having that little group, you're like, oh, we, we can do this better. We can make it better. It's thinking about making it better. It's a long process. Learning English is hard. And sometimes we have the teachers, oh, you have to read a book. And you're like, uh, I don't really want to read a book. Okay, can I read in Spanish better? But that's why you have to. That's why they give you the book so you can learn new words. You, you're going to be able to, oh, I, I don't understand that word. Instead of going back and asking, you already know. When you read a book, they ask you, you have to read a book or you have to do an essay. You, you're learning new words. And that's when you are improving yourself with that language. And you get to speak better. And when you are expressing yourself, the words are more fluent. Now that like... You had the Spanglish all messed together, or the Portuguese messed up together with the English. Now you're getting better at it, and that's the process. It's long, years are gonna come by, but you're gonna see the result that your English is gonna improve, and you're gonna be able to communicate with the teachers and your job and your children's. It's gonna get better. Hello everyone, my name is Karen Zamorano. I didn't come in much because I don't have any children. I just have a little chihuahua at home that I adore. And, and he doesn't speak, although I really want him to. <laughs> Sometimes I dream about him talking to me. Um, I was very blessed because when I came to the country, I had already learned how to speak English in Chile at school. But even though I already knew the language, it was a culture shock. And it was very difficult for me to get used to the idea of coming to school here. Um, it's a different language, it's a different culture. Everybody goes about their business in such a fast, hurried way. It's, it's completely different. And as scary as it was, I found that BCC is the great place to start. People like Diane Damaris, she's not here today, she helped me tremendously. Pat Weisberger, she was one of my teachers in the Step Up to College program. I did get my um, GED at BCC, and it's just been a wonderful experience all around. And it gets better every day and you see people that have struggled through and sometimes when you get to the other end, you're able to help those people that you see as you once were. And it's just, it's a wonderful experience. Thank you. No problem. Does anybody in the audience want to share any, um, any of your process or a few Wow. 
My name is Karen Zamorano. I am a student here at BCC, and now also an active participant for the Latin community. First of all, I'd like to thank Jackie and Diane for giving me the opportunity to participate in this panel. I'm always 
thankful and it gives me great satisfaction whenever I can contribute to a cause, especially one that for me hits so close to home. Well, um, I had a little something prepared for today's forum, a few life experiences that hadn't quite make it into my favorite memories bunch, looking to them to speak to me of my reality. However, after reading them over, I realized how dark it all was and how much negativity it brought forward. Looking into this, I have then decided that today I am not here to complain, not about society's unfairness and inequality toward many a woman that, like me, are part of a minority, but to bring awareness to all of you who are here today that although we may often find ourselves an easy target for abuse and discrimination, it isn't a stretch to relate today's cynicism and desperation to the misinterpretation of our cause and culture. The lack of education at times, and at some other times, the intolerance for change. Yet somewhere in between all the confusion, we find that there are many people in society that are willing to devote their lives to the cause of acceptance and inclusion of all cultures into this melting pot that surrounds our everyday life. A few examples of these we find in organizations such as the International Institute of Boston or the Immigrant Women's Support Center. They provide direct and practical assistance in the form of ESL and literary courses as well as refugee resettlement, legal and social aid services, and employment training and placement, among others. A few days ago, a very dear friend and professor of mine asked me whether the proper term was Hispanic, Latina, or if there was a different word that was better suited. And it got me thinking, not only about the fact that I really don't have a clue, but also that it doesn't really matter. For whenever I hear someone make a reference to a woman that is part of a minority, the first thing that comes to my mind is that she must be a fighter, a go-getter. She must have struggled and tried hard to get whatever little or whatever much she has. Because we are women of great effort, and even greater ability, and our best quality is not our heritage, but the fact that we don't give up. So whenever I meet someone that makes it a personal choice to put me down or ridicule me, it is yet another reason that fuels me to keep my head up and keep fighting, always pushing toward a better tomorrow, one that even though at times may seem ways away, I am confident will come. Thank you for listening. From Chile, South America, Chile. I just wanted to, of course, I have to take the tears out of yeah, my yeah. eyes. <laughs> that was wonderful. Um, my question to you, Karen, is you have mentioned that there are some dark experiences. Especially. Yes. Without going into detail, what advice can you give to people who are faced with somebody making a remark that you find is discriminatory? Um, how can you? in a positive way, react to that. Put yourself together? Um, well, it's a shock. It's happened to me plenty of times at different areas of my life, at work, sometimes even at school. Um, you smile pretty and you keep on going. Uh, like my speech teacher, uh, Joyce Fernandez said, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's like brushing your teeth. You don't want to do it sometimes, but you got to do it, right? So you just keep on going. Well, uh, about the language is English has an amazing thing that Spanish doesn't have. You can say whatever you want in different ways. So that's amazing, <laughs> especially for us when we are learning. So if you go somewhere and you say something and the person doesn't understand, 
you have another way to say, you just have to think about it. And that make everything easy. <laughs> I had an experience once with um, a teacher. Um, the teacher told me I was having a difficult time in the classroom. And um, the teacher told me, why you don't go back to ESO classes instead of being in my class? I took it as an offense. I looked down because I didn't want to sound rude to the teacher. I just said, I will try to do my best to make you feel comfortable and I will try my best to pass the class. That's the only thing I said. Um, to this date, I passed the class. <laughs> he, um, the person looked at me very proud and said, um, I should never have said what I said. Um, sometimes people don't, don't know how to say things. They just say it without thinking. Um, and not even to, to Latinas as Portuguese, Indian, Haitian, no matter from where you come from. If you're not from the American culture, sometimes um, teachers, co-workers, um, your boss, they got to um, talk in a way that they're not going to offend you, that they're not going to make you feel bad, they're not going to make you feel like an outsider. They, you don't want to feel that way. You want to feel comfortable in class, at work, uh, with your friends, you don't want to feel that you don't belong there. Um, I remember that day I went home and I started crying. My nana asked me what's going on. I told her the situation that had happened. She told me, you got to wipe your tears out. You got to demonstrate that you can do better. That even though the class is hard, you're going to be there and you're going to have good grades. And I did it. I wiped all my tears. I'm like, you know what? I'm stronger. I'm going to be stronger. I'm going to stand up for myself. And I'm going to show the teacher that I can do better. That I can, that the teacher thinks that I'm the low class, that I cannot do anything right. I proved the teacher wrong. I did my best and I did better. And sometimes we have to do that. Even though you don't feel comfortable, if you don't feel comfortable with the teacher, take him outside, take him on after the class or or before class, let the teacher know how do you feel. And the situation brought it up to the person. Tell them, I don't feel comfortable with what you said. Or you should limit the words that you're saying. You should all think about before you're going to express yourself towards me or anybody else that is not from this country. And you should let them know. Don't wait for the last minute to act. Just do it at the moment. Don't wait two months, three months to be like to tell somebody, oh, this happened to me. What should I do? They're going to tell you, it's too late. You should have done something at the moment. Do not wait long. And don't hesitate to go to, to the higher person so they can pull the person to the side and tell them, you know, what's going on. Also, I just wanted to add that so many times we take the wrong approach. Uh, we Latin women are famously known for having hot temper. I, God, very hot temper. But I've learned that that doesn't really go too far. When you want to teach people, you have to teach them by example. So I make it a point that if I find someone that's rude to me, that they never, ever, ever have anything bad to say about me. I teach them to treat me how I treat them. And also, I just forgot to say, while I was giving my speech, vote for Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> Just some things I wanted to say.
Three of my favorite days in the whole year. Uh, one, we just had our International Map Day. Uh, we have a Thanksgiving dinner for the International Club. And in the spring, we have uh, a wonderful celebration of our diversity with the, the food and the uh, uh, native dress and music. But uh, I also, and I know some of three of my favorite days of the year. But I also want to say that our commitment to diversity, we have to move beyond the food and festival kind of approach to diversity. And this is a good example here. The, uh, and I want to congratulate you very courageous in coming out and telling you this story.